felt I needed to get my cholesterol under control because uh, primarily I've got children, I've got young children, and if anything that would happen to me, they would be left alone because I'm a single mother. When I went in to see my doctor uh, for, to get some re results, and he informed me that my cholesterol level was 221 and that I was going on medication. Terry Walker and Brad Fagerstrom are just two of the 57 million Americans with elevated cholesterol levels, a major risk factor for heart disease, which is the leading cause of death in the United States. It's really very important for individuals to know their cholesterol level. Uh, cholesterol levels in this country usually run between 200 and 300, depending on a combination of genetics and diet. Dr. David Heber is the director of the UCLA Center for Human Nutrition. He says the American average is actually too high. Most physicians who are preventively oriented would like to see their patient's cholesterol below 200. That's because, ironically, people with moderately elevated cholesterol levels of 200 to 240 have the majority of first heart attacks. Some people who had moderately elevated cholesterol were more likely to die in their first heart attack than those with higher levels of cholesterol. Gives us a clue that doctors are starting to treat people with very high levels of cholesterol, but they're not paying attention to people in this mid-range of 200 to 240. Heber says a healthy cholesterol level is between 100 and 200. A moderately elevated level is between 200 and 240. And Heber says, drug therapy is recommended for a cholesterol level above 240. I discovered that I was genetically predisposed to um, having high cholesterol when actually when I was in my 30s. Terry Walker is in her early 40s. She's a single mother and runs her own company. High cholesterol is nothing new in her family. Well, my first concern when I first found out that I you know, had high cholesterol, of course, was, was heart disease. Uh, heart attack, stroke, that kind of thing. Lifestyle-wise, I changed some things after I found out that I had high cholesterol. I increased my exercise level to some extent. I thought I could take care of it with diet alone. And my diet was never excessively um, high in, in fat content, which was a concern because I, I actually cut all of the fat out of my diet and my cholesterol didn't drop. So that's the point in time that I chose to say, okay, now I've got to do something a little more proactive and either take medication or to take a look at all my alternatives. Terry's doctor put her on prescription drugs to help control the disease. I had some side effects from it. I was concerned about the potential liver involvement. Uh, when you take a drug like that, the doctors ask you to come in for a blood test every three months to be checked to see if there's anything, any involvement with your liver, any damage going on. In addition to that, I also had some muscular pain. The connections I stated earlier is state-of-the-art, and the device we have is the iPhone. It's an awesome Brad Fagerstrom is a baby boomer who runs a communications business out of his house. Brad never gave cholesterol a second thought. When I was younger, I had uh, uh, not the best eating habits, had a few drinks, um, definite stress. I was a broker stockbroker for many years and I was a Marine so uh, you believe that you can survive anything. I survived a couple tours in Vietnam. Brad found out he had a cholesterol level of 221. His doctor recognized the potential danger and told Brad to start taking a conventionally prescribed medication immediately. He was very uh, abrupt about it and uh, and I'm going, no! <laughs> I. I, I didn't want to get on medication. Brad and Terry each had reasons for finding an alternative to the mainstream prescription drugs designed to lower cholesterol. My motivation for finding an alternative to the prescription drug was that I wanted to find something that did not pose health risks uh, to my liver or to my muscular system. Terry and Brad came to the conclusion that a natural ancient Chinese herb called red yeast rice might help them lower their cholesterol levels. There are a number of natural supplements that have been used for people with moderately elevated high cholesterol. Among these, the most effective are Chinese red yeast rice. Dr. Heber studies natural remedies. 
Chinese red yeast rice uh, is an ancient Chinese remedy. Uh, it's actually derived from a yeast that grows on top of rice. And uh, this goes back to the 1500s when uh, this red rice was grown. Uh, and uh, the yeast itself contains in it a family of substances called monocolins. And these monocolins lower cholesterol by inhibiting cholesterol production in the liver. Seventeen studies have been done on red yeast rice in China. These studies led Dr. Heber to pursue his own research at UCLA. The study worked by us basically recruiting people who had high cholesterol but no other risk factors for heart disease. Those who took the placebo and had no reduction in cholesterol, while those receiving the Chinese red yeast had a reduction from 250 to 210 milligrams per deciliter, about a 15% drop in cholesterol levels. According to Dr. Heber, this is a significant drop in cholesterol. I often see patients in clinic who have a cholesterol of 220 or 230, give them the Chinese red yeast rice, and their cholesterol will drop to below 200. Red rice yeast lowered my cholesterol by probably as much as 80 to 90 points, uh, which is substantial because I was upwards closer to, you know, close to 300 before I started. And my cholesterol is hovering just a little bit above 200 right now. Brad decided he wanted to try red yeast rice and convinced his doctor to let him take it. I said, give me uh, 30 days. Just give me, let me go home, give me 30 days. I started using that red rice yeast every day. Made some lifestyle changes in terms of eating. I mean, I didn't go on some monk's diet or something. Uh, but uh, it was very exciting to go back in. It was 168. Uh, and then I just had a three-month follow-up, and the three-month follow-up was 169. So it had not only come down, but had stabilized. Still, the Food and Drug Administration has not yet approved red yeast rice, and Dr. Heber suggests consulting a physician before trying the supplement. Red yeast rice is fairly safe. Uh, it uh, carries with it uh, usual warnings that are associated with cholesterol-lowering drugs, such as pregnant women shouldn't take that, probably children shouldn't take it, people with liver disease should not take this. But in general, I would say it's very safe. And red yeast rice is easy to use. Both Terry and Brad take it in capsule form. A bottle that you would pick up at uh, you know, the health food store probably would run you sometime, someplace between $14 and $15 and as high as $40. And that might last you as long as maybe 30 to 45 days. Compared to the cost of conventional medicine, red rice yeast or red yeast rice is, is it's actually quite a deal. I believe in the future we're going to see food products developed that have the Chinese red yeast in them, uh, such as bars or chips and various things of that sort. Hi, how are you? Good. Come on and have a seat. But, Dr. Heber stresses, lowering cholesterol may not be enough to prevent heart problems. Lowering cholesterol is only one aspect of prevention. Uh, you also need to have a healthy diet, exercise, and lifestyle. There are many people who are taking cholesterol-lowering drugs who still get a heart attack. It's not a guarantee. For people with moderately elevated cholesterol, there are a few other natural substances that Dr. Heber says might also help. We believe that vitamin E may be one of the things that helps. Vitamin C may help. Garlic may be helpful. And niacin. And because you're using Chinese red yeast, you still could take vitamin E or other uh, antioxidants, of course, with the guidance of your physician. It's important to control my cholesterol, to stay healthy for my, for my wife, for myself, for my family, uh, to enjoy the things that I want to do. And, and, and I have a lot of water skiing left. It was extremely important for me to get my cholesterol under control, primarily because of the fact that I wanted to be around for my kids. I want to be around for my grandkids.